Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. My guest this week is Fisheries Division Chief Greg Power. We're going to talk about fish stocking in North Dakota. Greg, in the past 10 to 15 years, I suppose, the number of fishing lakes in North Dakota has at least doubled. Yeah. Now, it takes more than just providing water. I mean, of course, fish stocking has a lot to do with how successful these new fisheries right, are. Right, right. Yeah, there's, there's so much more water on the landscape, like you said, you know, compared to 20, 30 years ago. We have so many more lakes. Uh, so the requirement for us to at least get fish in there is just, I mean, it's been elevated big time. We are, last year in 2016, I believe we stocked at least one species into 250 plus lakes out of the 430, 440 lakes that we have in the state. So uh, a lot of stocking, there's like 91,000 pounds of fish went into those lakes, 12.3 million fish total. So um, if you go back to, you know, 70s or 80s, it was, it, it was pretty insignificant compared to now. These fish have to come from somewhere, these small fish that you're going to stock. We have two federal hatcheries in North Dakota. Can you explain the importance of these hatcheries to the stocking program? Sure, sure, and, and they're critically important. North, <coughs> North Dakota, I believe, may be the only state that does not have a state fish hatchery left. Uh, thankfully, we do have the two federal hatcheries, Garrison and Valley City. And they have a history, a long history of producing a lot of fish. And we have a unique state federal partnership with them where we provide some money for their operations. We do the, uh, the, the spring spawning, we'll spend you know, the better part of April and even May spawning fish, pike and walleye mainly. And then uh, and we do all the stocking. We do oh, 4,000 hours of behind the wheel stocking of fish across the state. So, and they raise the fish in those, in those hatcheries. And, and, and thankfully, North Dakota anglers uh, have been the benefactor of, of, of the two hatcheries in their, in their production. You and your crews have developed uh, a very unique project over the past probably 10 years uh, that doesn't rely on the hatcheries, and that's trap and transport. Explain how you do that. Well, trap and transport's another thing. You know, we got the hatchery production on small fish primarily, other than the trout and salmon, but uh, the trap and transport, we do that in the sp yeah, a little bit in the summer, but mainly in the spring of the year. Last year, I think we stocked 50 some lakes. We're removing adult fish. Uh, pre spawn fish. Pre spawn fish, usually. It depends upon the, uh, you know, we, there's some of the community fisheries across the state that we're moving fish just so, so it's kind of like an instant fishery in these small, small communities. Uh, in other cases, we, we're, we're targeting bluegill perch, stuff like that and we only need 100 pounds from a lake that there's too many in, and we'll move them to a lake that has none. And that will get, that establishes a year class, and then it's kind of hands off after that. So trap and transport's always been a management activity. We've really uh, accelerated it, though, in the last 10 years. I want to talk about a few of the success stories on some of these lakes that you've developed uh, in, in different species, and I want to take them a species at a time. Uh, and I want to talk first about muskies. Trophy fish, catch and release for the most part, and right. things like that, but they're not native to North Dakota. No. Now we have them. Yeah, they're, they're not native to North Dakota. We've messed around with muskie for years. Uh, we've become a lot more, we're getting really nice product when we stock them now, and we're, we're dealing with actually pure muskie, not just tiger muskie. Uh, we still have a handful of lakes. We don't, you know, it's not like it's widespread, but we put them in five, six lakes a year. Lake Audubon and the Canal Lakes are probably the, the, the place, the destination fishery for them, but they do need to introduce, uh, keep stocking them every year or every other year or something like that. There is no natural reproduction with the muskie. Um, another species that kind of gets overlooked as far as fishermen go with so good a walleye fishing across the state and that's smallmouth bass. Sure. And smallmouth bass is somewhat similar in muskie is that they're not native to North Dakota. Uh, especially during the 1990s, we, I, I guess there's probably 50 plus lakes that we introduced smallmouth bass into. And a nice thing, unlike muskie, is smallmouth bass do spawn in North Dakota and they, they, they're a self-sustaining fishery. Actually in the last, I think the last seven, eight years, we've only put smallmouth bass into three new lakes. Uh, all the other lakes out there that we stocked in the 80s and 90s, they're taking care of themselves. So that was more of an introduction and walk away from them and they've been a real success story. 
We touched on this a little bit with the trap and transport discussion, Greg. Uh, and that's these small perch lakes, these opportunistic sloughs, for lack of a better word. But now they're they're kicking out nice perch right. and lots of perch. Yeah. And, and most, of, most of the good perch fishing people have experienced in the last 10 plus years, 20 years in North Dakota are because of those trap and transport efforts. Again, spring of the year, we're going in there uh, pre-spawn fish uh, and taking out you know, depending upon the lake, we're taking out a couple thousand pounds maybe, but all we need to do is put about 100 pounds into a new lake. If it's a new lake, and introduce them in there, and they take, and then we don't, again, we don't need to go back to those lakes either. It establishes your class, it becomes self-sustaining, until conditions kind of deteriorate, like. Now, by drought, you drought, drought I would right, assume. right. When the things start drying up, then things, there's nothing you can do. You can't trap it, you could, you could try, but it's not going to provide a fishery, and that's kind of where we're at now. Plus, we're kind of uh, succession. We're going from the perch into a lot of those same lakes are becoming walleye fisheries. I know your crews go around every spring. They do a lot of test netting and things like that, walleyes I'm, I'm referring to. And if they come to a specific lake and say it's a good walleye lake, it's a good established walleye lake, but golly, they look and go, yeah, you know, maybe the population's down a little bit. We should give it a boost, and that's where the stocking program really helps well, the walleye population. Yeah, and wa walleye by far is a, the, the species that we deal with the most in the state. You know, I, last year, again, I think we're upwards of well, 10 million plus walleye. We, we stocked close to 6 million walleye into our small lakes, meaning that not the eight largest water bodies. The, the smaller water bodies, I think there's 100 and close to 150 lakes that got walleye last year. Um, which was a record. This year will be a record again. Uh, that requires most of our time is, are these walleye lakes. And for the most part, North Dakota, we don't have natural reproduction in our lakes. Now, there are exceptions. We do have some small lakes, a couple. And then the one I need to always mention is Lake Oahe and Missouri River. Uh, that stretch has not been stocked in North Dakota with walleye for you know, 30 plus years. And there's been tens of millions of walleye reproduced naturally in this system. So that one takes care of itself. I wish we had uh, Sakaka, we had Devil's Lake. There's some natural reproduction, but we do need to help them out time now and then. Uh, but these small lakes, they, especially to get them going, we do need to stock them and stock them annually. There is a success story that I want to talk about, Greg, and it's become a very popular fishing venue on Lake Sakakawea, particularly July, August. September, and it would not be there without the efforts of the stocking program, and that's salmon. Sure, salmon, again, so, somewhat similar to the muskie, you know, sa salmon, there is no natural reproduction that goes on in North Dakota. Uh, we do stock Sakak, we, we have with Chinook salmon, you know, since the mid to late 1970s. Uh, also the river sometimes, the tail race will stock a few, and uh, it's, it, you know, the fishery is predicated upon what we stock as well as the forage base. I mean, that's critical too up in Sakakwea, but uh, things are good now. We're stocking, I believe this year we were able to stock close to, or somewhere around 400,000 salmon into Sakakwea. And of course that rainbow smelt forage base is, is off the charts good right now. So uh, for the next few years, that bodes really well for the salmon fishermen. So in the big picture, the stocking program is good for yeah. all North Dakota animals. It is, it is, it's critical. If you're gonna have a recreational fishery in North Dakota, uh, you know, in some states, uh, stocking may be even frowned upon. They have a lot of natural reproduction in uh, uh, some of the mountain states with trout, for example. But the reality in North Dakota, we're, we're, weather is extreme here and the wind blows. The wind blows a lot and that doesn't help for natural reproduction. It needs a lot of help from us. And uh, again, thankfully with the hatcheries, with our dedicated staff, you know, the, the hours that go into it, but we've, We've been very, fo and then of course, again, water on the landscape. We have all these op options out there, all these fishing lakes. So our, our plans are continue. We have good sources of pike eggs, good wall eggs. The next couple of years, I think the hatcheries are gonna be there. Hopefully we'll be able to keep up with the, the demand out there. All right, Greg, thanks. 
Knowing which lakes in the state are stocked and how many fish were put in each lake would be some valuable information to anglers, wouldn't it? Well, that information is available in a back issue of North Dakota Outdoors magazine. Find the March-April issue of the magazine in the archives on the Game & Fish website at gf.nd.gov. All the information you're looking for is right there. Which lakes were stocked and when, how many fish were stocked in each lake, even driving directions to each lake from the nearest town and whether or not the lake has an access point. That's the March-April issue of North Dakota Outdoors, available on the Game & Fish website at gf.nd.gov. For Greg Power and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game & Fish, thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.